down south yesterday. We we're at Laguna Seca Raceway running this car hard. It was so much fun. I mean, putting down lap times faster than the fastest records for so many exotic supercar competitors like the Huracan Evo and so many other vehicles. But next thing you know, we're on the street um, driving the car to another event. So you can drive this car on the street, no problem, all day long, have fun. And then next thing you know, go to the racetrack and put down the fastest lap times imaginable. And there we have it, the heart of LA, the entire skyline right there to our right. And then we're kind of, uh, coming up to where the Z06 was actually revealed, the Peterson Museum up here, which um, is where all these exotic cars are gonna be for this big show. So if you're not familiar, this is where all the exotic cars kind of hang around here next to um, LA, um, like Sunset Boulevard and so forth. Very excited to be back. Look at the traffic, it's only 9 a.m. and this many cars are backed up. I'll be honest, it's very, very freaky driving a car like this through LA. It just scares me. Uh, <laughs> it's mainly other people around me because when I'm driving, I'll get G-Wagons or random uh, Camrys uh, trying to cut me off and, and do crazy maneuvers. People pass more crazily on the street than on the racetrack. That is what I have uh, learned and figured out <laughs> over these years. This is it, we have made it. You'll see the crazy design of their building in a few seconds. Come on, there it is. The reveal location for the C8Z06. Maybe they have some cool cars here today, but um, yeah, this is like the ultimate hub for all the exotic supercars here in LA. I can't tell you how many times a day I see ambulances, fire trucks, everything. It's it's, it's California streets, I'm telling you. Up, oh, check it out. We've got a, uh, I think an SV over there and tons of people pulling in. Let's uh, follow them in. Hopefully I gotta get out for that one of those ticket checkers. Let's pull on it. Up, uh, this is like straight out of Tokyo Drift right here. Turning in. Thankfully this car's got front end lift. I don't know where I would be without front end lift. Oh gosh. He's not gonna fit, is he? Oh, he's so close. Oh my gosh. And down that way is a McLaren Speedtail. Yep, McLaren Speedtail right there as we can see. Oh, he gets to go in front of me because he's got the more expensive car. Is it? That one's not more expensive. Alrighty, this is it. We're climbing to the top floor. Look at that McLaren row right there. Alrighty, we have made it. Let's turn off the McLaren a 600 LT and then head on out. We got all the McLarens lined up that way. Huge crowds of people ever as we can see. Um, the speed tells I think is upstairs, but tons of Lamborghinis. This is exactly what I'm talking about. <sighs> have made it to the top floor anyways and here we have um, tons of Ferraris, a Ferrari to line up on this side and then an SF90, our good friend is getting one I cannot wait to see his when he gets it. He's getting it in gold, which is so cool. Actually two SF90s, that shows you how much more the red pops versus the gray, because I didn't even tell the gray was right there. But um, you have all the Ferraris, so I think there's more Ferraris than anything else here at this event. But going this way, yep, those are, it's the hypercar alleyway down there. In all honesty though, I cannot wait to drive the SF90 because just looking at the car is insane as you can see. Not just that, if the 765LT felt so amazing we tested it out, then I can't imagine having so much more horsepower with this hybrid system. I mean, the way the car will accelerate is just gonna be something that's unlike anything else. Imagine this car on the racetrack of Laguna Seca, putting down our um, very, very low 130 lap time. This, I bet, can go under 130, and maybe even to like the 28s or 7s, just with the acceleration alone. But the big downfall is that there really isn't the best tires on this car. Cup 2s, I think you can put on better tires than that, um, because the Goodyear Supercar 3R, in my opinion, are like the best um, track tire for the money, and they even feel more sticky than Cup 2. However, manufacturers, they partner with uh, Michelin, and they can produce tires that aren't just normal Cup 2s, even though they say it. It could be like Cup 2R, you never know. 
Look at these massive intakes. I wonder if you push this car to its limit, would it have any heating issues on the track? I am very excited to see what kind of lap times this car can put down. My only fear is it becomes too electronically controlled and the weight becomes too much to, ha to handle. That being, it makes the car feel less agile. And check out this showing up. You can see our car way down there. One of the last in the McLaren lineup. I think McLarens are probably right there next to Lamborghini when it comes to the amount of cars that showed up. But Ferrari is definitely the highest. Here's the craziest thing is that you see more Ferraris than anything else on the streets here in like LA than also like shows when it comes to all the other exotics. Yet I never see Ferraris at all at the racetrack. Look, look how many here right now. And I've been going to the track non-stop like every other month or multiple times a month and I never see a Ferrari. I don't know why. These people gotta, gotta start tracking them. So here we have the hypercar row it looks like and the funniest thing is I just cannot believe how many amazing cars we've had the chance to drive this year. We've driven the Ferrari Roma. We have not driven <laughs> the open top Ferrari right here and the Senna but we have driven the Elva then also the Ford GT way down there. So we're making our way guys we're making our way to testing out all the craziest um, supercars for the money. But um, our friend does have a Senna and I see him at the track all the time. So very, very cool. And this car consistently will get like 127s at Laguna Seca. And the way it goes around the track, it, it's not like any other car because you have so much downforce. The speed comes so naturally and so easily. That, but you can see just how much aero is working on this car. Plus having, you know, more horsepower essentially than like a 765LT. Imagine it's corner to corner. So when I was talking to the owner, the one that I see tracking all the time, he even tells me it's just too easy. It's not like an edgy, or exciting experience in the same sense as a 765 LT would be. Though so I still would love to test one of these things out. One of the most raw cars though I have experienced is a McLaren P1. Riding in that car, listening to the turbos just whiplash every time you accelerate. That car is 100% in my dream garage, and it just feels so much like my 600T because it's so light. They're all accelerating away. Look at this angle right here. To our left is probably one of the most incredible um, looking Senna's I have ever seen in all honesty. Look at the exposed carbon fiber absolutely everywhere on the doors. I love that glass that you can see from the outside and into the inside. But then looking elsewhere, what's funny is that I managed to put on the same size tires up front that the Senna has on our McLaren 600 LT. So we have the same footprint essentially. Obviously nowhere near the same amount of grip because we don't have the downforce, right? But with that being said, all the McLarens fundamentally share a lot of components, that being on the inherent um, technology of the carbon fiber tub and the engines. So our engine is an adaptation of the one that's in the P1, same as this. So that is one very interesting thing. But look at all the exposed carbon fiber with the flakes everywhere on the paint. Love that s design up front with all the red accents. Yeah, if we can test out the Senna Thompson sometime soon that would be a dream and then way in the back for all of you a Carrera GT enthusiasts here we have a Carrera GT and uh, yep still timeless in my opinion but that rear spoiler is one of the strangest designs I have ever seen it's definitely it's not aging very well <laughs> kind of like Legos in the back if you ask me but the car still is fantastic. Anyways though guys, please let me know what do you think of the lineup here today. It's funny because going to these shows you get to see so many amazing cars, but I truthfully want to start testing as many possible, like we're doing right now with the Ford GTs and so forth, and getting a feel for how they all stack up. Because I've learned after driving like many of the Ferraris and then you know even McLarens, that some cars may be faster than others, but some may not be as exciting. So fundamentally, here's the deal. Um, I don't really see many of Ferraris or Lamborghinis at the racetrack, which is the funniest thing. Actually, I feel like it's pretty equal in terms of I'll only really see McLarens at the track. Um, I'll see like maybe one Ferrari like out of a handful of events and that being our good friend um, David with his 488 Pista but with that being said uh, Lamborghinis I, I don't see Huracans really show up or 
for Vermont is nothing like that. We got to start getting more people to go out there to the track. I've been seeing so many CA Corvettes, which is awesome. It's very exciting because once you truly get to experience a car at its limit, there's nothing else like it. And you just get mentally addicted to it. You know, even us tracking the F8 Tributo over there, the way that thing gets on power and the bucks on the upshifts is very impressive. But what I have learned though is um, I, I am very, very much gravitated towards the lighter vehicles out there because they feel much more agile. So what do you think the Critter GT would be like with that in mind? Anyways, though, I think it's time for us to head out. And the SF90 is pretty completely quiet. Heard the engine? And then here's a Porsche GT4. What do you guys think? Porsche GT4 RS or GT2 RS for the money? Please let me know in the comment section down below. So I have inquired to get a GT4 RS. Just waiting to hear back. Um, it is a hard part to try to um, obtain an allocation for. But we're just going to see how, how it goes. It would be a fun um, first Porsche. Do I think it's be the fastest car ever? I, I, I don't think so, honestly. But I think it's going to be a great balanced track toy. No, it's not going to be the replacement for like a 765 LT and so forth. That's much more the caliber of a uh, GT2 RS. So maybe, you know what, how about a GT2 RS? And here we have a McLaren at 600 LT, but what's funny about it is that this car does have a stock tire size. However, um, he's not running the original Trofeos. He's got, or the owner has got a 285s out back, which is again is the stock size, and then 225s up front. These wheels are as wide as the 720S, therefore you can run the same with tire, that being 305. Not just that, you can go all the way up to a 245 and it'll fit on the front. Then you'll be on the same equal playing terms as a 720S. So um, that's actually what we did. You can actually see the width of the wheel, and then you can see where the tire actually sits. So it's plenty of room, plenty of margin to um, increase the overall grip with a 600 LT. That being said, I think they limited the car purposely with the tire size to make it so it doesn't um, overtake the 720S. However, major advantages of the 720S versus 10 LT are, it is the horsepower and the active aero. However, it's marginal on the racetrack because the 10 LT can out corner it from my experience. Which is why in lap battle, it's a 600 LT and the 720S kind of overtake each other um, on various tracks. Like Button Willow, for example, the LT beat the 720. So if you get it set up properly and you drive it right um, on a tight track or a track with um, not the craziest long straightaway, the LT will be right up there with the 720S and pass it. There's massive straightaways you go for miles long then that margin will widen, for example. However, I'm actually wrong wrong about that because the LT tied the 720S at the Nürburgring. So, huh, that's interesting, isn't it? Anyways, let's get out of here. Look how dirty this LT got from the track. I got it all perfectly clean. Here we go, let's get out of here. Look at that. Put in your mirrors, fellow McLaren. Come on. Let's head out. Oh, check that out. We're behind SF90 and behind us, the 4GT. So cool, look at this. LA for you. SF90, you're calling my name. You're calling my name. We gotta test one of these things out so soon. Whoa. Jeez, he's driving erratically. He's like cutting people off. The Viper owner. What's funny about the Ford GT is that Yes, it looks amazing. The handling is honestly superb, but it's not the fastest accelerating car out there. So I can tell when they're building that car, it's really mainly about you know, the multimatic shocks and the incredible stability you get with that amazing aerodynamic design. Montana license plates, they all got them. Anyways, thanks for watching if you liked it. Make sure to hit that like button to help me out. I hope you enjoyed this uh, supercar vlog over here in LA. It's pr pretty exciting, but uh, the gist of it is that the overall takeaway I have is um, I see so many amazing cars, but people, you have to use them for what they're meant for. Then you start to appreciate what they're all about. And then you realize why they cost so much money instead of driving around having them perfectly cleaned and I'm smoking cigarettes out the window. That's not what it's about. Anyways, again, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for much for great content coming out your way. I'll see all of you in the next episode.